Vice President Temple Muppet. Present. Jim Nixon. Present. Michelle Panopoulos. Present. Cindy Redfords. Present. Bob Weisbord. Present. Mayor Doyle. Yes. And Council President Aaron Mudrick. Present. And Board of Solicitor John Walker. Present. Thank you. Um, I have uh, no specific comments. Let's do roll uh, pledge of allegiance. Uh, Mr. Pananopoulos, lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Mayor, do you have a report? Uh, I do. Um, first, uh, first up, I would we'd like to swear in our new Civil Service Commission members. Um, I'd like to ask John Gonzalez to come on up.
yeah, it's great. And it gets better every year. So actually, I'll pass these around because I really want to um, make sure that all the borough councilors know about it. And you do need to go online and sign up. It's right here in the big room in Borough Hall. And I'll pass a bunch of these around in case people haven't seen it. And um, this Sunday, time, 5 to 8. We'd love to see you all there. It's really a wonderful event that we do every year because it's fun. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Uh, no. Moving back, back to the row, second from the rear. Rear row. Any comment? Hearing none, I will close public comment. And we will move on to action item six. Um, Mr. Walco, would you like to make the necessary uh, language? Yes, uh, this uh, I guess will adjourn the public meeting and will adjourn into a public mm -hmm. hearing for uh, a request for a liquor license transfer uh, for the location 724 of Montgomery Avenue. Uh, the applicant is Ustand Liquors 1 LLC, who's here, uh, or from Jason Gordon, who um, is the restaurant for hoping to uh, obtain this liquor license for 724 Montgomery Avenue. Uh, the background of this is under the Pennsylvania Liquor Code. In order to transfer a liquor license in from another municipality within the county, there is a required transfer hearing uh, that allows borough council to ask any questions uh, that they may have and allows the opportunity for the public to ask questions about the operation uh, and their request to have this liquor license transferred in. So in that regard, I believe Mr. Gordon is here uh, to uh, explain a little bit about what he'd like to, to do at this location. Uh, and again, this is, this is a standard pr uh, procedure um, for all uh, inter-county uh, transfers. Uh, if council uh, is approving of this transfer, he then has to uh, proceed forward with the liquor code uh, process. But as part of that liquor code approval process, um, the Liquor Control Board wants to make sure that the municipalities are approved. So that's really why we're here. This hearing was advertised as required under the liquor code in the mainline times on June, February 4th and February 11th, as required. <laughs> and with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Gordon uh, to briefly explain uh, what he uh, would like to do with this license. Thank you, John. Uh, Jason Gordon, uh, 724 Montgomery Avenue. Um, I own the building there, and uh, we have uh, purchased a liquor license, and I'm partnering with Michael Passarello, who's sitting next to me. Michael owns four restaurants in the city of Philadelphia. And he is joining us tonight to talk about his restaurants and what the plan is for 724 Marco. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, like Jason said, I'm Mike Pasquarello. We have uh, four restaurants in Philadelphia underneath the uh, parent company called 13th Street Kitchens. Um, we, I'll, I'll just tell you a little bit about each one of them, working backwards. Um, about four years ago, we opened a place called Kensington Quarters. Um, it's in Fishtown. Uh, it's a butcher shop and a restaurant focused on sustainability and local ag. Um, uh, prior to that, we opened uh, Bufad, which is a wood-fired pizza concept, uh, you know, focused on the same sourcing practices. Uh, we have a little pub called Prohibition Taproom. And then 15 years ago, we opened up a place called Cafe Lift. Um, it's a brunch restaurant, open seven days a week, basically from 8 to 3. Um, uh, I'm a chef by trade. Uh, my wife ran the front of the restaurant while I, you know, cooked in the kitchen, sort of typical, you know, romance thing. Um, we're still married. Um, anyhow, uh, one of the passions has always been about, you know, sustainability and, you know, community. Um, and uh, what we'd like to bring to Narberth is a cafe lift. So it'll be our second, you know, cafe lift location. Um, and we see the opportunity to add the beverage program element to that. Uh, because the building is going to have, hopefully, have a liquor license transfer to it. So Michael's a great restaurateur. I'm excited to have him in the Nar Narberth with us, and hopefully, you see fit to agree that the liquor license should transfer in our county. Thank you. Any questions? So now would be a time for council members. To yes, if you have any questions regarding the operation or the request. Any council, council members with questions? Uh, do the members of the public have an opportunity? Yes. Any members of the public with questions? Yes, sir. So what? We said brunch only. So is, is this place also only open from eight to three? So we we're gonna we're gonna open from eight to three initially, with the intention of hopefully maybe adding more hours, or at least being able to use the license for private events. Okay. So, but you, but you're not 
saying how late. I mean, potentially, it could be up until 2 a.m. Correct. That's not part, the part of the license is not the hour. Right. The transfer of the license is to the location. Right, but I mean, it's good to know, because it's one thing to have a bar that's open until 2 a.m. It's another thing to have one that's open during the day. But you don't, you don't have to, you have that option later. Sure. We, uh, part, of, part of the original design that we have in place there, there is actually no bar or bar stool. Bridgeway 155 Marion. Um, is it uh, the, just the ground floor or the first and second floor? Or what, what part of the building is going to be the restaurant? It's just the first floor. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead, Councilor Kevin Moffat. How many seats? Uh, throughout the whole restaurant. Nope. How many seats in your restaurant? 65. None. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> what was the address? 724 Montgomery Avenue. So which building is that? So it's the building that's connected to Royal Bank by the bridge, so which is now Brimar Trust. What 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 liquor or beverage location had to close in order for you to bring this license? To <laughs> Actually, Pennsylvania has started something called the purchase of the zombie liquor license. <laughs> so we don't know who the zombie was. Okay. We just won it at an auction. Um, <laughs> From Skip Back, right? But we don't know who the owner of Skip Back is. No, I was just curious. Yeah, I'm sure. I'll take that at the end of questions. Yes. Um, so the sign will, um, uh, we will, I believe at this time, let's adjourn back into the public meeting uh, and this resolution of uh, position um, voted upon by this council. Okay, so uh, we adjourn the public meeting, we're in adjourned. And uh, I will uh, take a motion for action item 7A. Uh, yeah, I would like to make a motion that at this time, Narver Borough Council um, appoint a citizen to replace the vacant seat on Borough Council. Is there a second? A second? Okay. Now we can have discussion. Would anyone like to uh, talk about the candidates who interviewed at the last meeting? I'd like to Go ahead, Ms. Richards. Um, so I found the matrix incredibly helpful. Um, I was able to, I'm going to have three minutes. Yeah, we're going to Okay. I, I found. Hey, I'll go. You can see. I'll go on myself. Uh, I found the matrix incredibly helpful. It allowed me to rate folks and really look objectively at all the different qualifications that we collectively came up with as a group. I think this is a fantastic problem to have. And to have eight people come forward that are qualified and can sit at this table is a lovely and difficult problem to have. And here's the top four per my scoring on this paper. And I'd like to explain that I think all four would be fantastic. I think the other four have absolute merit as well. Um, first is Susan Snow. Um, she ran recently. She had almost 600 votes. Um, she checked boxes of a skill set of diversity, um, a history, and a perspective that I find great value in bringing to this seat. Um, I'm also in tremendous support of Dennis. I think he's in a unique opportunity. His skills align with a comprehensive plan, and I do understand that he is not able to run. So this is the opportunity that we can have, and his record of service is commendable in this town. Um, Rob, I thought, is absolutely wonderful. He showed his public service to the Shade Tree Commission. I look forward to sitting with him either now or in two years. If he chooses to run, I would love to support his candidacy. And additionally, Ira, who comes with an amazing skill set that I think would be really helpful to our community as we undertake these large public works. Um, any four of these I would welcome. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, if I could take Go comments. Um, I, I also found the matrix incredibly helpful. It helped because we had a group of eight people who were really good and, and offered a lot of different skill sets and it helped me to whittle it down in, in an objective way. So um, I ended up with, with three people who put their names in who I couldn't, I couldn't rank low on, on any, any aspect of, of the written the matrix qualifications that we had all, we'd all agreed upon. And so to me that means I would be thrilled if any of those two people were, uh, were to sit in that seat there and I would, I would vote for any of their candidacies. And those three people actually turn out to be the same. Uh, they are Rob McGreevy. Um, and Susan Snow and Dennis Montagna. I feel all three of them really distinguished themselves. I wanted to say a few words about Dennis. Because in my opinion, 
He's, he's not just the most qualified in that, among the eight outstanding candidates, but I, I think it would be difficult to find another person in Yarborough who has more consistently and patiently participated in this community or immersed himself in understanding and shaping our community's evolution. And I, I want to make a pitch for his ability to put anyone at ease. He can talk to just about anyone. He has a lot of strong relationships and friendships across what are sometimes perceived as divides in the borough. Uh, he manages to find common ground with a lot of different people. And he has relationships with planners and doers and preservationists in the surrounding township. I've had a lot of people here have attended one of his very engaging presentations on our birth development at some point, and they know the kind of passion that he has for it. And he's displayed that passion for decades from historic preservation in the early 90s. He participated in workshops on form-based zoning, the open space plan back in the early 2000s. So just over the years, he's really um, always shown that he's really interested in every facet of this, of this community's development and evolution. Um, so for me, I just wanted to, to make that particular uh, note that um, I feel like he has a unique skill set bringing that lens and understanding of how to fit our current decisions and the planning and decisions that are going to help shape us as a community for the next 20 to 50 years and put that, those issues into the, in the larger arc of understanding our evolution as a community. I find that to be a unique and special gift. And uh, I just wanted to say those few words about that next week. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Else? I'd like to share something, an idea, and then, and then comment. If, if, sure. if, uh, and then, so I'd li actually like us, I'd like to move that we appoint Robin Greedy to fill the vacancy on the Narvikburg. I'd, I'd like to move that we appoint Robin Greedy to fill the vacancy on the Narvikburg Council. We have a motion on the table, but I guess it could That's be all right. And, and I would offer that to you motion. as a friendly amendment, amendment if you are, are willing to accept that. I I am. Okay. So now the motion on the table would be to appoint Rob McGreevy to Number Pro Council. Is there any further discussion? I'd like to so I'd like to comment on that. Um, I agree with the fact that with the notion that the matrix that we used to judge the various the eight really terrific opportunities we had to appoint excellent candidates who came forth that were interested in serving on the council. Um, I agree with both Cindy and Michelle um, with, and their reasoning. Um, I would add one more to the list in addition to the, to the three and the, the, the four that you suggested and the three you suggested. And I would say that Holly Bond Farrell um, presented an extraordinary case for why she should be one of the next borough councils, councillors of Narber. She's a new resident to the community. She has extraordinary communication skills and a, and a true vested interest in Narber's of the future. And I, I, I um, you know, I, I, I nom I'm nominating Rob McGreevy because I feel that he shares many of the same qualities um, in addition to his experience on the Shade Tree Commission as a community organizer. And, and has prepared him well to, to understand how the borough government works, how the, how the office works, and, 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 and I'm glad he will, might have an opportunity to sit at this table. I would like to add that this was a very painful, difficult thought process for me because um, Dennis Montagna is, to me, you know, among the most qualified people who could ever sit at this table. And so I completely understand why anyone who would want to have Dennis sit at this table wants Dennis to be here. Um, I've been friends with him for, for 20 years, and, and he's everything Michelle said he is. Um, the, my main concern here, and, I, and, and I, you know, I felt that Ira was a very good candidate too, but my main concern is in, in, in appointing a candidate for two years, is in some ways as, as skilled and quali qualified as they might be and as ready as they might be to sit at the table, to only have continuity for two years with somebody to get up to speed, to learn how to do this stuff, to experience what it's like to not have the public always think well of you. You know, it's not possible to, to make several decisions at this table over the course of a year or two and not have people in the community not think well of you. That's, that goes with the job. So, you know, that takes some time to get used to and, to and to stay focused on the fact that we're here for the good of Narberth that whole as at large. And I've only been on the council six years, and I'm the second most senior person on this council. I think that's a problem. I'd like to see 
the next few people who join this council be here for, for eight, 10 years, 12 years, people who really have the future of Narberth, uh, invested in the future of Narberth. I think Narberth's about the future as much as it's about the past. We, we can't live in the past or the present. We can only, we can only focus on the future. Um, I, in, the, in my short six years, I've served with Mr. Alexander, Ms. Richmond, Mr. Diaz, um, um, Mr. Ghosh, and one, no, 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 Mr. Ms. No, I'm talking about two-year appointments. I've served with five two-year appointments. Uh, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Deutsch, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Diaz, Ms. D, uh, Marlene Richmond, and also um, Barbara Fortin. Bar they were all they were all made their contribution to the council and were excellent, and and um, you know in some ways no one could have made a greater contribution than Barbara Fortin at the council. It's just, it's it was our loss that she couldn't continue and provide that continuity of service and dedication and experience um, at the table now. And therefore, I really I guess I'm I'm sorry that I'm I'm, I'm not able to cast my vote for, for Dennis at this time, but I I. I support Rob McGreevy for the position. Before we vote on the amended motion, I have two very brief remarks. The first would be, um, I applied to council twice through the appointment process. Twice it was a no-go. And the only thing worse than that was being on this end. And it's, it's I, I know that everyone at this table would agree that it's really hard to take one person and tell seven no thanks. Mm -hmm. So I encourage all seven to stay involved, get involved, and move up. Um, I did think one candidate stood out, but it was, I found it very difficult. I wrestled with my decisions and, you know, it, it's very cliched at this juncture, but I do think that we're blessed to have such a plethora of knowledge and dedicated citizens, and I thank everybody who applied. I have just one, Go ahead. thank you. Uh, let me just say I'm blown away, because I'm, uh, I just am, I'm blown away by what's happening here. Um, I originally sat down at this table as an appointment. Um, in, for 15 months, and then and then ran to retain the seat. Um, my my top four candidates were, were mentioned by all of you, so it's very similar thinking and understanding of what has to happen here. Um, and you're right uh, when we when we come here and, and it takes an opportunity. I mean, everybody has you guys like brought up every single point that could be mentioned to do this job. Um, I am appreciative that this group took so much time and thought. I appreciate the fact that there was a score, which we'd never used before. Um, it worked out uh, for me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very thankful that everyone has put forward their best uh, comments. And um, again, there, was, there were two standouts for me. And, and out of the, by top four, they've all been mentioned. So I'm, so thank you all. Uh, I'd like to offer a few remarks. Applaud Council for their thoughtfulness in this process and um, you know, uh, their, their engagement in a kind of a rule set and a way of working together that I think was uh, more thoughtful than maybe mm -hmm. we have tried in the past. We always try things new. I think Council members have felt that they have the opportunity to bring ideas to the table and we, you know, we'll experiment and we'll try and we'll always want to do better. Uh, we have an embarrassment of intellectual riches in the town um, and we're very blessed. In similar situations over the years, I have seen council choose to expand boards, expand commissions, make amendments by ordinance so that more individuals in our community can serve in different respects. Um, the population is a little different. It's sort of, you know, the government, the, the state prescribed body um, is a little less flexible in that regard. But it really uh, may be kind of back to those candidates who want to be engaged that there are other opportunities, there's other ways to serve your community that really are equally important. It's not a hierarchy of importance. Um, none of it happens without, you know, the left hand can't move without the right. Um, without the rec board making decisions about the future of our parks, we can't make decisions about how much money we need to spend. It all goes together, and so I hope those candidates will pursue other opportunities. I know we have a number of openings on the Human Relations Commission that we would be very eager to fill. We can't have an organizational meeting until we fill those roles. Um, that, while in some senses might seem like a, a lightweight opportunity, if a case were to come before it, it suddenly becomes not lightweight. And that is a great opportunity for someone in our community mm -hmm. to step up. 
Um, and it's also a way to just be involved, um, be on the scene, and I encourage you to do so. Um, we'll take a roll call vote. Excuse me, I, you know, I want to amend something just in case yeah. somebody was listening to this and wondering, well, why can't Mr. Ira Winston or Mr. Dennis Montaigne serve more than two years? They both stated that they would not serve for more than two years. That's, that was the basis of my assumption that they wouldn't serve for more than two years. No other reason. <laughs> just wanted to make that clear. Sure. Okay. Um, Mr. <laughs> Mr. West, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Nixon. Yes. Ms. Panopoulos. Yes. Ms. Rickards. Yes. Mr. Weisbord. Yes. Vice President Tedlin Moffitt. Yes. And President Mugrich. Yes. Unanimous six to zero. Thank you. the motion to also include the minutes of January 17th meeting this year. Okay. You say no. Sorry. Yeah, not really oh, the minutes retracted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a little confusion, which we'll come to in a moment. Can we, can we get a second? I second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Let's I discuss it. Matt, so, would you like to explain, uh, give us a little background? January 17th you. are not ready to go yet. Um, Leslie has been under the weather. Um, and it was a relatively long meeting, so she hasn't had a chance to um, get the meeting minutes. Uh, but the reorg meeting is there, and we have December <coughs> and December business meeting are up and ready. So, um, just as a point of information, we had a discussion at the last meeting about the December 6th and December 20th minutes, and uh, former Councilor Fortner raised a number of issues with. Uh, Leslie Marshall being absent in the office, uh, changes to address those concerns have not yet been made. So I'll leave it to council to discuss. Yes. Okay. I'll leave it to council to discuss that they would like to make an amendment to the motion to. Um, yeah, I was unaware. Back. I was unaware of the. I, I had been under a misunderstanding that that had been addressed. So that would be December 6 and 20 minutes? Correct. I'd like some input on council before we make a motion. Should we find on those two? It even speaks the accuracy and, and what we do as a legislative body. I feel it's important to have this information be as accurate as possible. So uh, I would amend then to exclude December 6th and December 20th. So there's a motion on the, I'll second and accept the amendment. The motion on the table then is to approve the minutes of only January 2nd. Could I make a suggestion? Certainly. Oh. 
Please. Help us out. Table this motion. This may, I, I motion. I'm going to run out of gas here. I'm going to move the table the motion. I'll second that. Motion is uh, all in favor. Aye. Aye. It's tabled. All right, moving on. 7C. 7C. This one again later. I submit a motion to approve the schedule of bills. Um, I, I, when I looked at this, I didn't see anything that stuck out at me, but if people have questions, we can certainly attempt to answer them. I'll second. All right. Any discussion on the schedule of bills? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. All right. 7D. 7D is, is uh, moving on. The, we already had a hearing tonight on the transfer of the liquor license. The hearing has been closed. So now there's a motion to transfer the liquor license to the Narberth Borough from the unnamed Skipback Bar, <laughs> otherwise known as the Phantom Zombie Liquor Zombie. 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 Zombie Liquor so, License. It's just Mardi Gras. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any dis is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on the liquor license transfer? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed you now. Thank you. 7E, Public Works. I would like to make a motion to consider the trench restoration cross-section standards. Um, to council folks, you got the critical map. Um, I can tell you what it, what it means. Can I get a second first? Second. Okay, there you go. Okay. Um, this is an attempt to meet the PennDOT standards for streets. And it holds PICO, Aqua, and others accountable for when they do street work. If you want more details as to what this actually means, we're going to have to defer to Matt. Yeah, sure. So this was an attempt. Sure. Um, this, this effort was led by the borough engineer, Dan Malloy. Um, with all of the um, utility work in the borough, we noticed that our trench restoration specifications were out of date. Surprise, surprise. Um, so this was an attempt working with our professional staff to bring that up to current, to meet and or exceed current PennDOT standards for both permanent and temporary trench restoration. Okay. Any other questions on this matter? Okay. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're going to close. Now, 7F. 7F. Um, I'm going to introduce this. I'd like to explain it, if I may. Um, so um, after last meeting, um, I did some we'll research. Make a, make a motion. Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I moved it. Uh, Narberth Council um, reshape the terms of the Narberth Industri uh, Borough Industrial Development Authority. We made two appointments to the authority after, I believe it was last meeting. Mm -hmm. And in looking at the terms, because I used to be on that group and researching the issue with Sean and Matt, we realized that the authority structure, due to just mistakes that had been made over years under prior borough management, was out of compliance. The way it's structured, one term needs to, there's five appointed members to the Narberth Borough Industrial Development Authority. Every year, one person should be up. Until approximately 2015, that's the way it was. I can, I can give you a history lesson, but the bottom line is it was all out of whack. So we, we looked at the group we had, and everyone was currently, we have five people who were appointed, so we had to restructure. In conversations with council president, uh, Solicitor Walco um, and the members of the Industrial Development Authority, um, I came up with a recommendation which is contained in the motion that I'd like to present to Council. Um, so we had Amy Lempert, Andy Hackinson, Roberta Dunn, Serge Ghosh, and Ian Anderson. Ian Anderson being the most recent appointment who was appointed to a full five-year term just two weeks ago, I thought how he ought to be the one who expires in 22. Serge Ghosh was appointed in 17, so putting him at 21 puts him on target for the original intent of his term. Then you have Roberta Dunn, uh, um, Andy Hackinson, and Amy Lempert. Mm -hmm. Roberta was appointed bef uh, Aya before Serge and Ian, yeah. so that puts her next to 2020. For 2019, Andy Hackinson was appointed to fill the remainder of an expired term, which was set to expire at the end of 19. So that puts him where he is. And then that puts Amy Lempert up at the end of 18 this year. And that was a difficult decision because you don't want to cut anyone short. But the reality is Amy has approximately seven years in. And if she's doing a good job, there's no reason she can't reapply. 
Um, I, this, was, I, I, this was not a solo proposal. I genuinely think it's the right way to proceed with the authority. I used to chair the authority. But I, I wanted to hear what council thinks, if there's a second or not, and if you want to have discussion on so, that. So the motion uh, that uh, Mr. Nix has proposed is to adopt resolution 2018-002 as written to restructure the terms and expirations. Can we get a second? Uh, it's not all seconded. Yes, go ahead. Now it's seconded, we can have a discussion. Does anybody have, I mean, any, no, I just any want to, I just want to appreciate that you worked out in, in, in a way that is completely rational and thoughtful and made sense to me and I hope to others um, and just seemed fair. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thank you. And just to add, we, we, we've had to do this, uh, when Mr. Cilio was here with Rec Board, we've done had to go back and, and kind of clean this thing up. Um, since 14, we've had a few of these sort of misalignments happen and have to go back and straighten it out according to the ordinance in which these organizations mm -hmm. operate. So that's mm -hmm. why it has to be. Okay. But, yeah. mm -hmm. Mr. Walker, so, you, uh, you agree with uh, everything yeah. you heard? Okay. Yes. Just checking. Yeah, Mr. Walco drafted this. So. Yes. Thanks, uh, Mr. Uh, Walco. Mr. Nixon, I'd also like to thank you because, um, yeah. you know, I know you have a history having previously served on an IDA, but uh, the devil is in the details. Yeah. And, you know, um, we wouldn't ever want uh, the financing or um, the opportunity to disperse funds to be in question uh, because of an administrative error made in the past. So I really appreciate you stepping in on this. Thank you, Mr. President. Any other comments? No? Uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing none opposed, uh, the motion passes unanimously. 7G. 7G, I move that um, we pass a disposition of borough records. This is the last thing out of finance administration tonight. Long story short, this gives the borough staff the authority to shred and or otherwise dispose of arcane and unnecessary records to be passed. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Mr. West, would you like to give us an update? I the wish there was more boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a few. I've got additional fire station. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is an attempt to continue with the new business process of making sure we're on top of document management and attachment A is residential building permits from 2012. Statutes is five years. We keep an additional year just to, just because. Um, just one box. But if you remember last summer yeah. I started this mm -hmm. in boxes and boxes. Mm -hmm. I wish I had boxes and boxes, but time is of the essence. We will get there. Okay. Any other comments or discussion? Thank you. Yeah. It easier on us because we can find documents. Mm -hmm. you know, if it's all digital and archived, we can actually yes. find answers. You have moved this to 2018. Okay. Okay. And to reiterate for members of the public or those unaware, uh, this review process requires uh, an individual from the borough to physically touch and inspect each piece of paper to make sure that it's not just thrown into a box that says 2012, but it actually is. And that is a laborious process. It is. And uh, I know that it's incredibly interesting and it's the thing that you always want to do. Oh, oh, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm on my list of things to do every morning. No other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing none opposed, it's unanimous. We move on. To uh, 8A, Mr. Manager, or Mr. Assistant Manager, acting as manager. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's just been a whirlwind of a week. Um, thank you for the public's patience with um, <clears throat> limited staff. It's been um, challenging, but uh, hopefully if you've left a message, we will get back to it at some point. Um, I just want to talk about the ongoing aqua work on the northern side just as a public service announcement that work is going to continue just um i know it's a stressful thing we try to get uh, we try to communicate where the road is going to be uh, closed on a daily basis that have a lot of moving parts some days we get it some days we don't um just you know as a public service announcement just be kind to the construction folks we're trying to do their best and we're trying to do our best um be prepared Eco's coming next, along with the Aqua. So it's, it's going to really ramp up here in a month or two. Uh, if I could just add to that, which is um, I'd like to congratulate the office because 
uh, I know that uh, previous work did not have this level of communication on a daily basis, mm -hmm. uh, ensuring uh, that much communication with the contractor and posting detour signs. Um, I know that you heard a lot of mm -hmm. complaints from the community, and I really appreciate that you uh, you took the effort, and uh, you've made a, a tremendous difference this time around. Thank you, and I just want to give a shout out to Public Works, because that, that's really where it starts. They're here before we are in the office, and, they're, and, and Fran's taken it upon himself to communicate with the foreman on the job, gets the information, relays it to the office, and Leslie gets it out on mailchimp. So kudos to right. everybody involved. So, a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. And it changes pretty quickly, too. So weather dependent. And Absolutely. Mr. Solicitor, do you have a report? I do. Uh, I wanted to make council aware of uh, a number of ordinances that I've been working on. Uh, some are uh, ready to proceed quickly, some are in the preliminary uh, phases. If there isn't anything on this list that you believe that I'm working on, please let me know. <laughs> uh, I think the most uh, the detailed one uh, and the one that I've been working on uh, most recently is the, what I call the form based code technical amendment ordinance. I've been meeting with the North Planning Commission, I think, for the last three meetings. Uh, from my position, uh, I have all I need from them uh, at this point in time to proceed uh, with this ordinance. And, and I call this a technical amendment ordinance because it's not addressing uh, larger scale community issues, uh, maybe dealing with uh, substance changes. Uh, these are more uh, typo corrections or missing provisions that often is, is uh, form language from county uh, proposed ordinances or model ordinances that, that should be in there. Uh, that is something I believe is coming before Mr. Wiseboard's committee uh, from, from on the, the 28th. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, I would hope uh, to provide it to council uh, shortly thereafter. So we'd be in a position, hopefully, uh, unless there are significant changes that need to be made to it at the next meeting uh, for a motion to advertise that. And, and that would be uh, due to the nature of that ordinance, I, I would hope to have that to you um, for you to review for any discussions. Uh, it also needs to be circulated to both the planning commissions within 45 days prior to the enactment for their review as well. Um, so that's the technical amendment. And, and again, uh, in the background of that is the, the substance change ordinance. So I, I have drafted a number of um, proposed provisions that address some of the comments that were made. Um, that ordinance is not going to be in a position um, uh, for any passage until uh, larger scale discussions by council and the Norwich Planning Commission are made as to certain uh, issues, building height, uh, you know, density type of discussions. So although uh, I can take stabs at what what has been recommended, uh, there's going to be need, need to be further discussions on that. Uh, additionally, as far as zoning goes, uh, there is a DAS, which is distributed the antenna systems ordinance, the small cell tower ordinance. Uh, that is in a position um, to, to go, uh, again, it, is, it does need to be provided to uh, the planning commission of the county. Uh, the North planning commission has reviewed, um, and I would imagine they would approve of that. Um, so again, that, that would be, uh, I guess, I think Mr. Weiss works maybe as well um, to have that come out of there. Um, there are a number of other miscellaneous ordinances. Uh, one of them uh, is a, uh, a reworking of the UCC Chapter 50, the Narbus Code, which would really be adopting the 2009 um, UCC uh, building codes. Uh, that uh, we were working with Yerkes to do, since it is very technical when it comes to building codes. That is in a position uh, to move forward as well. The only hold up to that is that we're also hoping to make changes to the International Fire Code, uh, I believe it was chapter 27 yep. here as well. Uh, in a perfect world, we'd be able to pass one ordinance that incorporates both the fire code changes and building code changes, um, essentially adopting the uniform standards with the amendments that Norbert would like to have. Um, I'm still waiting to hear back from uh, some of the fire personnel uh, regarding some of those changes. Um, the council can proceed with just UCC, or we can wait to see if we can get them both together. Uh, that will also include some cleanups of the, uh, the ordinance chapter section that addresses the fire company uh, to address some language and to, to make that work with how the fire company uh, runs today. Um, there, uh, I'm also going to be working on a, uh, a, I'll call it the garbage ordinance, um, which, which
ordinance, the trash ordinance. <laughs> right now under the borough code, we have a, a chapter that addresses garbage and waste, one that addresses recycling, and one that addresses you know, disposing of refrigerators, for example. Um, there isn't a reason that we need to have those in separate chapters. Consolidated into one chapter. It needs to work with uh, what we're currently uh, offering and what we want to have, which is reflected in our, our waste disposal collection contracts. Um, so that's a matter of making sure that that all works together um, and that the, the fines and the provisions are what council um, so chooses. So uh, that is something that is being put together right now um, that I will be uh, providing to um, seven months. What, what, what committee would that be? It, well, it public came out of public safety. Pu public safety. From a long reason. So that's something that should be in the pipeline for the spring. Uh, another ordinance is a uh, amendments to the public nuisance ordinance. Right now, uh, we have a public nuisance ordinance, um, which is pretty unique in our work. That isn't something that I've, I've seen uh, in other municipalities we represent. Um, most, uh, most municipalities have the International Property Maintenance Code. Uh, it's my understanding uh, that Narberth doesn't want to have that for, for reasons that I can completely understand with the call from the community that we have here. Um, I believe there will be some discussions today possibly about how that will be addressed. Um, ultimately, uh, I believe that the public nuisance ordinance will be repealed uh, and then there will be a sort of limited in scope uh, property maintenance provisions that address the issues that need to be addressed in order to keep work here. The public nuisance ordinance really uh, is an administrative nightmare. Um, for for the borough, uh, it, it provides a lot of responsibilities for the borough manager that really should not be uh, within the managerial position and discretion for that matter. Uh, so I can I, I believe that that does need to be corrected. Uh, and speaking of, of the manager, uh, throughout the borough code, there are a number of positions and responsibilities assigned to the manager that probably shouldn't be the manager's position. It should be the zoning officer. Um, any sort of building code officer. Um, so another comprehensive cleanup that uh, I'll be doing is to go through uh, and to make those designations or to allow the manager to appoint a designee to handle those matters uh, so the administrative uh, matters are being handled by the appropriate persons and maybe readdressing the manager's role in communication with the council and the mayor's office. Um, the, there was discussion previously about uh, down the line a, a plastics ordinance um, that is something that, that I, I believe could move forward. It's in very early phases. And again, that is an ordinance uh, that would discuss potentially uh, having limitations or bans on certain uh, plastic products that uh, Councilperson Rivers is uh, interested in pursuing. We're happy to work on that. Uh, I also believe that there will be some proposed potential amendments to the Civil Service Commission rules and regulations that we've done for the ordinance. Uh, I think that there needs to be some further discussion. Uh, as to whether or not those need to be made. But again, something that's in the pipeline. Uh, and then finally, uh, there was some desire to do a, a reworking of the <coughs> subdivision and land development ordinance or the SALDO ordinance. Uh, that is something that I, I believe it would be in the best interest to defer to the Planning Commission. Three consultants would be cheaper and more efficient to do it that way. Um, I, I would anticipate those changes would do things, for example, incorporating the landscaping <coughs> ordinance that we have in a separate chapter into the south. <coughs> so again, streamline. So I'm hoping to take all of these these chapters that address small items uh, that really should be part of comprehensive planning to pull them together. Um, as I mentioned, a number of these are in, are in positions to, to move forward. They just need to come out of committees. I anticipate those probably one or two a month moving in through in, in the summer to have them done. So if there's anything else that I did not mention on there, Feel free to, to email me or to discuss that in the future. Thank you. That's a very comprehensive list. Yeah. And I think it gives the public an idea and also <coughs> the council members who are committee chairs and <coughs> of um, the work ahead of us. Uh, all of these things are accomplishable this year, and I think next year the list should look entirely different. We won't have any hangers on, and we'll move on to the next thing. You can move on to fun projects. That is correct. <laughs> yes. That's right. First, the foundational project. Ordinances from 1913, and then we can move on <laughs> to the 21st century. Um, any uh, the monthly reports have been filed. They're available online. Any comments for the good of council? Hearing none. Any old business? 
moving on. Any new business? New so business. Discuss property maintenance or another topic? I would like, uh, under new business, uh, this was sent by Mr. Walco and shared with council members um, and the office as well. Um, I'm sorry, Rob. Um, if you don't know, now you know. Um, ordinance uh, 853 uh, introduced borough council an ordinance repealing Norbert Borough Code Chapter 102, which is that public nuisance code. This is a, um, a motion to advertise. Am I right, John? Um, if, if you'd like to pursue Yes, it, I would like to pursue it, John, as is. Thank you. Is there a second? Yes, yeah, second. Repeal. All right, thank you. All right, some, some discussion. Um, oh, maybe you can tell us if we repeal it. What happened? So here, so you heard uh, Mr. Walco very eloquently explain that nuisance is pretty broad um, and kind of gives power uh, to the office that maybe it does not want, or to one individual um, where some other pieces should have been in place. Uh, it allowed um, previously, or under this ordinance, that uh, the borough manager, to, manager could define what a nuisance was in the borough. It's uh, a lot of what is in nuisance or what has been brought to us in the past under nuisance um, are really covered either in the criminal code or our other subsequent ordinances. Um, this current uh, manager, you know, our, our colleagues in the office, well, felt a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. having such a broad um, definition in their care and that uh, they felt of maybe a little entanglement from the community, mm -hmm. um, from neighbors in putting the office in positions they didn't feel comfortable or perhaps in litigation feel uncomfortable. We discussed it at public uh, safety and uh, striking of this in the same conversation we just had we're having now and Mr. Walco um, did tell you in that list of, uh, of um, ordinances he's working on trash is one of them that will encompass a lot of that recycling a lot of that public dumping so so mm -hmm. trash is what it'll now be called but it started out as public dumping which is how it got to public safety it's a long story mm -hmm. and then the other components were once written in 82 86 those are years um, in, through public works and that they need to be condensed. So under the criminal code, some of this will be currently covered. We are writing those ordinances and under, as Mr. Walker said so eloquently, uh, the, the idea of a uniform property maintenance code addressing the, the big 12 or 15 issues that occur in the borough repeatedly that the office deals with as nuisance. Ms. Paul? Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions about it? Questions for uh, Councilor Tevlin Moffat? Right. Again, all, all this all this really does is repeals that chapter uh, in its entirety. Mm -hmm. and, it, and all we're doing is advertising. Advertising. Yes. Correct. Right. Correct. Right. So so there it doesn't add anything in its place at this time. It's really just saying, you know, we're getting rid of chapter 102, which was amended by ordinance 853. If you were to look uh, in the code books, there's actually most likely an older nuisance chapter. Um, that was replaced by one of the So okay. it's had its iterations. Right. And so then, just to underscore, this is not solely about what well, the office can't handle all these nuisance calls. But as a no, council, no. we're no. saying we should not no. be giving the discretion of the word of nuisance yes. to one person. person. Correct. Yeah. It's a right. bad idea. It's a bad idea. Yep. It's, yes. Uh, the, the standard for nuisance is, is subjective. Right. I mean, you for mm -hmm. property maintenance, you will address nuisance. Right. Right. For example, and not that I think this is one of the problems in our earth, but and I'm sure it won't come in, but if your grass is too high, your grass is too high. Yeah. You know, it's right. not, I feel like your grass is too high. <laughs> I, 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 I can measure and it's above 16 inches or upper than be. I think everybody appreciates having notice in advance of what is considered illegal behavior. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's read it that that's, right. that's better policy. <laughs> and, and, that, and that is something that through the property maintenance code or whatever we would do would provide with the, the notice provisions the ability mm -hmm. to, to be in line. Uh, with that prior to any actions being taken place. This this has a, you know, and it's not just what's a nuisance, but it's also what's an emergency, uh, which is also uh, pretty, pretty big. <laughs> yep. And, and it, it, it has a very, I think, administratively heavy process of requiring there to be a voluntary abatement uh, prior to taking any actions on prior so that, to, to, to the cleanup. So that, that the manager was responsible for Trying to make sure the person was clean enough themselves, you know, uh, giving them the options to do that, giving them notices that, that, that are required. Um, whereas it's sometimes also being yelled at by the person to fix the problem now. So it, it, it's, it, it's uh, again, administratively a, a nightmare, uh, very subjective. Um, and I think I wouldn't leave 
that counselors that refer without having some to address public nuisances that can be specifically identified to long, because uh, it will create a little bit of a hole. Uh, but hopefully we can act uh, swiftly to, to, to address those issues. That, uh, Vice President President Moffitt would like to Okay. All in favor of advertising? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Here we go. Uh, any, any other new business? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.